Hello YouTube, Tommy's Reptiles here and in today's video I'm going to be tearing down these two tanks and replacing them with a 60 gallon breeder. This dinky little filter is not doing a good enough job of cleaning this turtle's water so he needs an upgrade. For this new tank setup I'm going to be using the Fluval FX4. Now I'm going to start tearing the tanks down. But first I have to get Bungie the Diamondback Terrapin out. I'll have to keep him in this little cricket container until I'm finished. And he doesn't look too happy. All right, Bungie, time to go wait, buddy. Here, I'll give you something nice to look at. Time to start siphoning the water out of the turtle tank. I've had this tank up and running for about a year and this filter just can't keep up with it. And I wanna give Bungie more water to swim in. Setting up this turtle tank will be one of the last things I have to do before my reptile room is complete. And now onto the fish tank. This is a 40 gallon breeder African cichlid tank. So this upgrade will also be good for the fish. Okay, so all the water is drained out of the tanks. Here's my new empty canvas to work with. I'm gonna wipe down the surface that was under the tanks just to make sure any grime is removed. Surprisingly, it stayed dry and there really wasn't much to clean. Let's take a look at the new tank and its new spot. I usually paint my backgrounds on, but this time I got one of those backgrounds that they sell at the fish store. I actually really like the way this background turned out. I really like the nice blue color. So at this point, I'm just reconnecting the Fluval FX4 to the new tank. I usually like to put my inlet, outlet, and aquarium heater in the corner so I can hide it later on. Now that it's all hooked up, let's fill it up with water. I prime the filter so we can get these fish some water flow. That's one thing I really like about this filter is it breaks up the surface tension and puts a lot of oxygen in the water so you don't really need an air stone. I'm gonna give Bungie a little break from being crammed in that cricket container so he can see his new tank and stretch his legs a little bit. This upgrade is gonna give him a lot of well-deserved enrichment. He's gonna have a lot more water to swim around in and more places to explore. It's also nice to take a break from setting up this new tank and just looking at it and game planning where everything's gonna go. The way I set it up today is just gonna be temporary because I'm waiting on a couple things to arrive in the mail. I cannot wait for this tank to be finished so I can just sit down relax, and enjoy watching Bungie swim around all day. This is my least favorite part of setting up any aquarium, washing sand, getting all the dust off the sand. It's super annoying, but has to be done or else the tank will be completely cloudy. I have about 70 pounds of sand in this plastic tote and I've been letting water run through it for like an hour. Now it's time to take Bungie out of the aquarium so we can put the sand in. All right, let's go Bungie. This is the last time you're gonna have to come out of this tank for a long time. Back in the cricket container. I learned this method of putting sand in a fish tank a few years ago from a couple YouTube videos, but it reduces the chance of the water becoming cloudy. It takes a long time and is very monotonous, but it's definitely worth it in the long run. In this tank, I'm using children's play sand that I got at Home Depot for around four or five dollars. It definitely beats spending 30 or 40 dollars at a fish store. I only have to do this step about a hundred more times, so for time's sake, I'll speed this part up. Now I'm placing some rocks in here that I got from Blue Zoo, which is a company that uses all natural rocks. They make really cool rocks for reptiles and fish. For my terrapins basking spot, I'm gonna use this cool piece of flat driftwood that one of my friends found me at the beach. I'm gonna wedge the end in one of the holes in these rocks. I have to wedge it down because this wood is still buoyant, but over time, it'll become waterlogged and much easier to work with. So now I'm just making sure that the pointed end of this driftwood will fit in the hole in the rock. Just by eyeballing it, I think it will, but there's only one way to find out. Here's the hole, and it fits. Nice. I'm trying to wedge it in there as far as I possibly can so there's way less of a chance of it ever coming out. I think this will work perfect for now until it becomes waterlogged. And when it does finally become waterlogged, I'm gonna use a steel cable to suspend one side of the wood out of the water. So the terrapin can climb out on the log, bask, get some heat, get some UVB, and get completely dry. Let's take a look and make sure there's enough room for the terrapin to get out right now. And there is. So for the next step, I'm gonna take a low profile heat slash UVB light and mount it above the basking area using this galvanized steel wire. This steel wire can hold up to 25 pounds and I'm using two strands of it. So it'll be able to support 50 pounds and this light doesn't even weigh a half a pound. So I think I'm good. I got lucky that this light just so happened to come with these little holes in it and the wire fits through it perfectly, which makes it really easy to attach above the basking area. 
I haven't used this low profile light in a couple years, so I think the UVB is probably shot. So I'm gonna have to order brand new ones. I'm gonna thread and secure this steel wire to the metal shelving above the tank. Now I just have to figure out the right length to cut them at so there's not too much slack. Hopefully these old rusty snippers can cut through this wire. I'm gonna thread a second steel wire through this light just to be extra safe because I always get paranoid when there's lights above water. This is the first time that I've ever mounted a light using a galvanized steel wire, so if I have any issues, I'll let you guys know in future videos. And again, for time's sake, I'll speed this part up because it actually took me longer than I thought to figure this out. Doesn't look too pretty, but it's secure and no one's gonna see it anyway. Let there be light. I'm also gonna zip tie that outlet to the right to the top shelf so it's away from the water. Here's a look at what we have so far. Now I'm gonna take these Higer LEDs and zip tie them to the top as well. I highly recommend these lights if you have an aquarium. So I ended up just mounting one light to the top and then I left the other light right on the aquarium because eventually on the right side, I'm gonna get a glass aquarium cover. Time to put Bungie the Diamondback Terrapin back into his new home. Now I'll leave you guys with some footage of Bungie swimming around, eating, and enjoying his new habitat. Thank you for watching Tommy's Reptiles. I hope you enjoyed this video.